welcome to IRI Growth Insights, featuring IRI thought leaders, industry partners, and guests. For more than 40 years, IRI has been known for its invaluable data, but these podcasts explore insights that the data reveal to fuel disruption and market growth for CPG, retail, healthcare, and media industries. I'm your host, Tanya Shakart, coming to you from my home office in Southern California. So hi, everyone. We're back with Jennifer Polino, Senior Vice President of Omnichannel Media here at IRI. So great to be chatting with you again, Jennifer. Welcome back. Thank you. Glad to be back. So last week, we talked about the insights from past crises and how we can apply them to what we're going through now. And of course, now being the coronavirus pandemic. And this week, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to cover how advertisers are being abundantly cautious about measurement during this time. And then we're going to um, dedicate a few minutes to a little bit of a conversation around artificial intelligence and machine learning. So, um, okay, so Jennifer, COVID-19 is causing some drastic changes to con- consumer behavior, right? What Mm -hmm. does that mean for advertisers in terms of adjusting measurement strategies right now? Sure. We did. We spoke a lot and we had spoke a lot about in the past about how these um, new behaviors are changing drastically and the patterns of which uh, we are learning about the individuals and, and how can, how the clients can think about overall measurement and what does it really mean during these times Mm -hmm. and what I like to think about is is that research research really matters yeah and while we may not want to be like while measurement during these times might be a bit skewed there is still a argument to be made of ensuring that we collect the data, we Mm -hmm. collect the data, do some of the research um, and do some of the measurements so we can understand what's actually happening, what's different, what has changed, where we might need to adjust, um, you know, going forward. Mm -hmm. So that being said, as the highlight, you know, we do have to think about measuring with thoughtfulness. Mm -hmm. You know, we, um, you know, I know that these are a lot of the discussions that I have, but we're here, you know, to support the needs to, you know, better optimize and measure, you know, your campaigns and especially during uncertain times. And we want to proactively work with all of the advertisers, the agencies and the MarTech to provide the best recommendations on what's going to be best for the products and the categories and the brands affected by this unnatural purchasing behavior, distribution, and consumption behavior. Mm -hmm. So we really think about three areas uh, that we want to address. We think about the measurement period of what we're looking at. So if we have a measurement period where it was a bit um, uh, up leading up to kind of those pre COVID, um, you know, panic buying moments. We usually think about making sure that we measure up until then, just measure as normal because we think that that's going to have that minimal impact. Okay. And then we have to think about, you know, depending upon if that campaign continued to move forward um, during that March, April, this March, April timeframe where we saw that, you know, heavy buying, those different buying patterns and heavy panic buying, thinking about how do we think about the results and think about the inputs that are driving that. So we want to make sure that we're proactively engaging and helping to make sure that we understand what's happening during that period, avoid comparing campaign lifts or ROAS uh, to the norms or campaigns prior to pre-COVID during Mm -hmm. the outbreak, because we know that that is totally different. But what we want to do is we want to focus on understanding which tactics might have been most effective during these unique times. And so we think about if you're going to pause and you're pausing your advertising and you're pausing mid-flight campaign measurement, um, 
we support that, but what we do is we want to continue to get the exposure data and the information so that we can understand going forward of, you know, what happens during these particular times and how we have to adjust. Right. Because we, we talked about the importance of, of continuing to advertise, you know, through a pandemic, um, certainly providing your, your messaging is an off key, right? Um, and so it is important to understand what campaign tactics are most effective. Can you give a little bit of insight around that? Sure. Yeah. One of the things that we take a look at, you know, our measurement is based off of experimental design, test and control. And we use that to determine the effectiveness of the campaigns. But and we look at that through a lens of total campaign, but we look at it through more broadly and more granularly measured through lifts through penetration and trips and dollars per um, per dollars per trip. And while we're thinking of you know how we're measuring, we need to take into effect. Um, what's happening in the marketplace. So when we first do that matching, we think about what's actually happened in that panic buying. Um, is it essentially a local phenomenon going on? Um, are these, the, the way in which we match these um, markets, do we help them adapt to local purchase changes to um, ensure that homogeneity of that testing control? So mm-hmm. we're looking at we're really focusing on that to make sure that we can at least be able to match exactly um, the same types of behaviors that are happening. And we do that at a market level. Mm -hmm. And then we also are looking at the panic buying behavior. So we'll look at um, matching on those test and control households based off of no panic buying behavior exhibited versus a low level of panic buying behavior or a high panic buying behavior exhibited in those particular categories because I think it's important to um, be able to try to understand those differences. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to report on breaks um, that have, you know, that for the affected campaigns to help them understand, you know, what was the ad effectiveness with the differences between those three consumer breaks, no panic buying, low panic or panic buying. Right. And and we also take into effect um, other enhancements, you know, as it relates to, you know, what were the out of stocks <laughs> during that right. time on a particular category or a particular brand that does it help, help and or hurt a companion brand and having a halo mm-hmm. off of, you know, one brand versus the other. And we also look at, you know, anything from differences where we can measure the differences between an evaluation of online versus offline uh, buying behavior and the differences there. That's great. So I'm just curious, what, what kinds of questions are CPG leaders asking of you right now? Yeah, they're, they are asking about not only the, you know, should we continue to advertise, but yeah. if we are advertising, what does this mean and what does this measurement mean? And how do we, in this changing time, one of the other questions is, if we are getting all of these new buyers and we're seeing so many changes, you know, is there still an opportunity to optimize and how do we do that? So I always think about measurement, you know, as measurement is the benefit to uh, get, to learn to help optimize your other campaigns there's also the fact that you can supply data to help optimize and fuel um, different types of programmatic campaigns that might be um, still in the market to optimize on a frequent basis right because i mean as a manufacturer i still want to know how my brands are doing you know, in this environment. And if I'm winning buyers and retaining loyal ones, how do I keep them? Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. Exactly. Exactly. And one of the the ways in which we think about that optimization and keeping them and, you know, not being able to have a lot of data about, you know, how that affected us yet, you know, those campaigns during that time, um, we think about, you know, that continuous optimization. And so you can use data if you have the the data from a deterministic standpoint and you can provide that transaction 
level data that allows us to understand what those people were purchasing and who those people are and feed that into a programmatic source, they can start looking at the behaviors of what those individuals were not only buying and but what they were also searching online. Mm-hmm. So they they can have a lot of the, the awareness metrics also tied into the sales metrics to help provide that optimized next impression to the right consumers versus it just being um an unknown because of the the changes and um, and the drastic changes in consumer behavior and buying patterns. Right. So maybe we can recap for our listeners um, the types of measurement IRIs recommending during this time. Yeah. Um, Pre COVID, um, if you had a campaign going forward, you, know, I, you think that's still important to stop. You know, do, do all the measurement right before the pre COVID happened. Um, the if you were doing a lift measurement, that would you know continue to uh, you know uh, hold true in that particular case. Um, while if you were doing more of an evergreen and continual measurement of your campaign, we do say that you continue to measure, you keep that measurement flowing to understand, you know, providing the, um, providing the exposure files and information to us so that we can match them up to sales. Mm -hmm. But you're not using any of that information to make any decisions. You are using that information. We are using that information to understand the types of patterns and also what we can look at going forward and Mm -hmm. how do we best protect ourselves or what type of methodology that we might have to adjust going forward. The thing that I continue to, from a measurement standpoint, um, that I think is still important is understanding the repeat of these individuals who have come in new buyers and right. is your messaging, if you've adjusted your messaging or if you didn't adjust your messaging, how did that, uh, how did that affect those new buyers? Are they coming back? Are they coming back more, uh, more quickly than others? Um, so there is that opportunity to understand that relationship between the creative that was done during that time, the new buyers who are associated with it. And as you move forward, are those new buyers coming back? And is there a long-term that va- what is the long-term value that is associated with those new, those new consumers that came in during that panic buying time? Yeah. Yeah. Because the, the numbers that, um, that came in, you know, from March are going to look different than, than April, absolutely. Right? Um, well, so there's not a baseline to be, I mean, the baseline is now reset. Yeah. It has to be reset and has to be looked at. And we need to understand not only what people were doing prior to that, but then what they were doing, what they did during and did those say some of those same behaviors and what portion of those same behaviors are being held, you know, towards the future. And that's why you have to continually look at, and it might not, it's not the same measurement, but it right. is, you know, thinking consistently of what you're learning throughout that process. Yeah. Yep. Well, so maybe that's a, a great pivot um, for a chat around AI and ML. Um, just, mm-hmm. you know, it's top of mind for all of us, right? Um, given what's happening right now with, with this pandemic, finding a vaccine, um, and, and drugs to treat the coronavirus is something that AI and ML is being used for, right? Used to identify some of those drugs that were developed to fight other diseases that could now be used to take on, on this virus. And so what is the importance of AI and ML in, in a marketing and measurement sense? Yeah. No, it's a great it's a great question, right? Because we use artificial intelligence and machine learning in our in our world. Um, and you know, even at the best of times, you know, or in the crisis, um, it's always been true. Artificial intelligence, it's a tool. It's a tool that helps value and should be used in a a search way in a certain situation, but it's fueled by the humans who design it Mm -hmm. and who use it. And that machine and that work from the machine learning process is fueled upon similar patterns 
right. and inputs that go into uh, you know what you're feeding it, so that it continues then to start um, understanding this is a um, this data is associated with this result. And you continue to feed that in there. It looks like this. It looks, you know, it looks right. the same pattern. And it starts picking up those patterns and making the adjustment. Right. Now, but the, but the with, patterns are being disrupted, right? The patterns are totally disrupted. Right. Exactly. And so now we have to start thinking about what lessons that we continue mm-hmm. to learn and how do we continue to program that. And our approach to AI should be thinking about how do we gather and train for these new situations right under these you know crazy conditions and what does that look like and it's not going to be a easy switch but we have to think about the individuals who are actually feeding in that data um and that's where that human centered mm-hmm. uh decision making also needs to come into play. And it's the type of individuals that we need, you know, from a programming standpoint to think really broadly about, you know, it, these if then situations right, that can right, feed right. the right Decision data in to build the right, yeah, right. to build the right, uh, the, to build that right algorithm yeah. that can take into effect these changes. Right. Like, um, like there has to be some kind of algorithm adjusted for new behaviors like panic buying. Correct. That's exactly what we're saying, right? Right. Because in other cases, I mean, if you just fed, you know, our regular information now into the situation, it will totally fail because it was never programmed into that situation. You know, it's great for repetitiveness and, right. you know, those t- particular situations, but now that's kind of out the window. So now there's new programming and new thinking that has to be um, associated with it. And that is making sure that we reinvent the rules and we um, reinvent them differently. Yeah. Yeah. So I read, um, I read an article, I think in Tech Republic that said um, that AI is no longer experimental or um, expendable technology, that the, that this crisis has demonstrated that it's mission critical technologies for many industries. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so seeing- absolutely. Um, you know, we've made stunning advances in you know the the last number of years on how um, AI is you know providing a lot of quality into that technology, but it's also to a, a testament as to the humans who have been incredibly creative into how they program that mathematical tool and computate uh, the the information that is is coming out of there. And so, foundationally, we need to think about you know what are the basis is that we're we're going forward. And now we have some new base basis that we have to think about as right. we drive and you know uh, try to help solve you know other problems going forward so it will you know be up to us to address these you know situations by thinking broadly and how do we continue to program correctly because the the worst thing you could have is you know a situation where you know, we've seen it where AI is, you know, failing because um, it doesn't have enough of diversity, enough of diversity of thought into the inputs going forward and the building of uh, the, the necessary information uh, that's allowing the program to run to provide the output. Right. What's that analogy, the, the garbage in, garbage out? Bit of it, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly it. So, yeah. um, you know, that's why I always, uh, you know, we continually think about, and um, I, I've, I've spoken a bit upon this about, you know, as we, why STEM and STEP technology for mm. women and um, is so important and having, you know, a wide variety of people that are programming that because they think and act differently Definitely. than others and can have a much more holistic view. And the same that goes true for as we're thinking of going forward and we have this panic buying situation um, that has gone on that has disrupted a lot of the, you know, mm-hmm. of the normal patterns that we're seeing. We need to make sure, you know, women are still 
providing 85% of all of the buying behavior That's for, right. you know, products. We talked and, about that, right? <laughs> Women are essentially yeah. CEOs of the house, right? Correct. They're making the decisions about what's being purchased. They're going out and making those purchases. Yeah. So and so that, you know, represented. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, as you're thinking about it, like all of the behaviors, like the new even behaviors that they're having. So as you think broadly, that's why you have to have like that real um, diversity of thought. Um, and that might just not occur to somebody else that hasn't lived through it. So yeah. that's, it's a, a conundrum that we need to make sure <laughs> that we're addressing in a much more holistic fashion from a uh, broader media analytics and technology play um, in this ecosystem. I think well said, well said. This is fascinating. And I'm sure there's an opportunity um, to take a deeper dive into this topic in a future podcast because um, I think we've just sort of scratched the surface, yeah. right? Yes. Um, so, I, well, I, I look forward to speaking with you again, Jennifer. Thank, um, you. thank you. Thank you so much. I Yes. Have a um, great rest of the day and I look forward to talking with you again too. Yeah. We'll talk next week. Thank Thanks, you. Jennifer. Bye. Thank you for listening. Please visit iriworldwide.com to view the IRI COVID-19 dashboard and insights portal, where you'll have access to daily updates, in-depth reports, as well as observations and implications for the CPG retail industry. Please become a subscriber of IRI Growth Insights and let us know what you want to learn more about. We'll serve it up in a future IRI Growth Insights episode. Look for us wherever you get your podcasts and be sure to review IRI Growth Insights. Also, visit us on the web at iriworldwide.com and connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn.